there are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Welcome to Boomerology Revealed. I'm Shahar Boyaya and your host. You know, boomers, they want to live forever, and we want to be healthy, to enjoy every single moment of our lives. Today, I have a special guest, and we are going to talk about herbs and how we can use them to improve our health. Let's watch. Today, I'm with Mary Lysett Harrison from MillCreekHerbs.com. Our topic is herbs, but before we go there, Mary, tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, Shahar, first of all, let me say I love your show. Oh, thank the you. Boomer Revealed. <laughs> and, uh, about me, I'm a clinical herbalist. I am trained in herbs of all sorts. Mm -hmm. So I actually am a clinician, a practitioner. People consult with me for their health concerns okay. and I have an extensive herbal pharmacy. And uh, I love to help people understand how to use herbs safely and appropriately in their diet and health care. Awesome. And today we're just going to talk about diet because I brought in some early spring herbs. Oh, nice. And since it's so early in the spring mm -hmm. here, I want people to know that some of your herbs come up this early, e even in April and early May, and it's the best time to harvest those particular herbs. Uh -huh. So I can tell you what I've got here today, okay. uh, some of which you're going to be very familiar with, and some other ones maybe not, but I want to help you with this because these are very easy to grow, and I think you're going to be surprised at some of the things you might learn about them. The first one is chives. We're all familiar with chives. Now, this is in the Allium family, and you may also know that when it goes to flower, it produces a big multi-flowered head on it. Uh, and you can actually pull those little flowers apart, and each of those little flowers has a burst of onion flavor in it a little later in the season. But right now, for a mild onion flavor, there's nothing like chives. So I'm going to do the beginnings of a recipe here, okay. just parts of a recipe, and then I'll tell you how to use it when we're done cutting. So I'm just going to slice them up just like you would. You know, I encourage people to grow their own. Chives are so easy to grow, and you'll get two harvests, one in the spring and one in the fall, oh. when the weather cools again. Okay, so... That shows you how much I know about gardening. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you got me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> mm, the smell is really good, the aroma. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. For dips and dressing, salad dressings, uh, for butters, things like that, what I suggest you do is when you add your herbs, you let the herbs sit in whatever you've got them in, whether it's sour cream or butter, and let it sit for a little while so the flavors marry mm -hmm. into the sour cream, just like you would sour cream and chives for your baked potato. So really, this is all you'd need, but it, just think, it bumps up your nutrition for your family so much. Parsley is so rich in minerals, and uh, everybody knows uh, Oregano is a great antioxidant for the body. So when you add fresh herbs, it just adds so much energy to your food and vitality, which is what we're looking for. You know, we're all trying to stay healthy and maintain wellness. So for a dip, for example, would mm -hmm. this be enough? Or do I need more? How, how much do I use from yes, the herb uh, itself? Yes, I would, I would do all of my chives okay. for a dip. And probably that would be uh, an eight ounce container of sour cream, okay. for example. So Got that it. gives you an idea. That would serve a few people mm -hmm. if you were having baked potatoes. So I'll just leave that like that. And now I want to introduce you to a beautiful early spring herb that is only present here. We're right at the first of May. Okay. I know you're gonna run the episode later, but this particular herb, it's really delicate and uh, has lacy leaves Yes, it's very beautiful. This is called chervil, C-H-E-R-V-I-L, and the taste is mild anise-like flavor. Um, Can I grab one leaf? Sure, to see? yeah. Taste it. Tell me what you think. Mmm. Can I make tea out of this? Yeah, you can nice. make it. I, 
probably really good for your digestion. I have it's never also tried that before. Super high in potassium. Mm. But how's the flavor to you? Is it just? I like it. See, I don't like licorice flavor and okay. anise flavor, but this is so mild. Yeah, it is a lot mild. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And uh, these particular herbs that I'm showing you are best used fresh at this time of year in the early spring. So I'm going to chop up a little bit of that. You want to get rid of your stems pretty much, but it's such a tender little plant. It grows from seed. Mm -hmm. It will reseed itself and will kind of take off in your garden. But for me, I can never get enough of it. Mm -hmm. It's such a little plant. It's only about, each one is only about this wide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they scatter themselves around your garden. And I really don't use it dried very much because I think some herbs uh, lose their flavor when mm -hmm. they've been dried and shrivel is so great fresh that's the only way I want to eat it. Now the next one is unusual um, but I love this herb. I call this herb the bride of the garden. It's mm -hmm. green all year long even under the snow. So and it, it grows during winter as well? Uh -huh, it, it just stays green. Now the leaves don't taste quite as good. You can okay. try one and tell me what you think try. it tastes like. interesting but it's very different cucumber People yes say it tastes like yes, cucumber yes it does so the beauty mm. of salad burnet is for people that get upset stomachs with cucumber and don't tolerate it well mm. when you chop this up and put it in a sour cream dip or or a salad you still get the cucumber flavor and you yet don't you don't have the side effects right you don't have the side effects and plus it's not watery uh, huh. like when you make salmon dip, mm -hmm. you know, the sauce you put on salmon, sometimes a cucumber can make that sauce watery. Right. So I like to just use salad burnet because you get a stronger flavor. It's very easy. You just pull the leaves off. This also will volunteer in your garden a little bit more, but you know what I like to suggest is that you share it with friends and neighbors. If you have too much of one, yes. take it over Teach there. Teach them to eat natural things, yeah. right? And, and how do I plant this? Does it come from seeds or? Yes, you can plant it from seed. Uh, mine just volunteers. I've actually seen it growing up one of our canyons here. Oh, really? In a campground. Oh. I have no idea why it's up there. Wow. But um, it's just a really great herb. And I'm doing exactly what I love to do right now, Shahar, is to show people these mm -hmm. things because I think when you see it or you have a hands-on experience, mm -hmm. you just tasted these herbs, mm -hmm. you go, oh, okay, I get it. I can integrate that into my life. Right. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we want to do to be healthy boomers. <laughs> And lastly, I want to show you this plant that I don't know uh, if you're familiar with it or not, but this, it looks a lot like celery, right? It comes out of the ground like this. Uh, and this is a very young stalk. This is called lovage. And lovage, people think herbs are little tender perennials that are very small. But this is Lovage that's about three weeks old. Three weeks. And this is about one week old. And wow. this plant will get to be eight feet tall. It gets bigger than even this. I'm because going to feel really short. <laughs> 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 but the beauty of this plant is if you have, I say in gardening, herbs belong everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have a place in your garden that has full sun and it's a big space and you can have a large very large plant which is probably six feet wide and eight feet tall I suggest you plant a uh, lovage. Lovage is known for its strong celery like flavor and I like to use it dry the leaves they dry well and then I put uh, the leaves I dry them and I use them for a celery like flavor in lamb stews and lentil soup wow. in the winter time because so it has a heartier more substantial celery flavor but right now we can use it fresh and I just pull the leaves off or cut them off mm -hmm. and I'll chop these up and these are very soft tender little plants right I heard before that, that people also drink tea out of this right yes it's um, it's related to one of my very potent medicinal herbs called bear root or uh -huh. osha Laguscum porteri it's related to celery uh, it's kind of in the parsley family it gets those big flowers on top like fennel and dill but and they get really big and the bees love them oh yeah so anyway so this is all about gardening and growing your own mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what I, what I suggest you do with what I just diced up here this is so easy you buy any kind of vinaigrette you want or make your own and then you add 
these herbs to your salad. Mm. You don't have to put them in the dressing. You just toss them with your salad. And it, it's so great because I've had dinner parties where I do this. And I can actually see the energy in the room mm -hmm. just go up and people become more conversational. I think it's just the goodness and the nutrition of these herbs. The diversity that is included in that, that is also a very good thing. Yeah. And really, I'm all about real food. I think we always yeah. should favor, you know, things from the ground that we can eat other than anything we can buy out there. So it's really good to experiment. I love the, the taste of this one. It's very strong, though. Yes. Uh -huh. Right, but it's very good. Yes, and the reason I showed you the young ones is because when it gets to be about this size, mm -hmm. and especially when the heat comes on here in Utah, you know, it gets really hot, yes. these leaves can get bitter. So mm. this early springtime the perfect time. is the perfect time. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're Mary Lysett Harrison is also an author. She has two books that you can you can see here. And if you want to know more information about herbs or get one of her books, mewcreekherbs.com. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I have this friend that went through a knee surgery and it was very interesting because I learned a lot about challenges during recovery and things that can help with that. So one thing that we found was the bed caddy by Stander because it's a device that helps you sit in bed and on the first days after surgery she needed that help. The bed caddy has a unique ladder-like system with three hand grips to make it easier to sit up in bed. It's great for people who want an extra support while sitting up and can be used with bed rails if that's the case to help you easily get out and in the bed. It's a fantastic thing for temporary issues or if you have an aging parent. So take a look at bed caddy bystanders. Rent time. Look at this magazine. Women's Journal Magazine, Ladies' Home Journal Magazine. And this is a magazine that, as far as I know, I'm not a reader of that magazine, but it's been going on for decades. It's a very traditional magazine, and it has 3.4 million subscribers, a lot of subscribers. But guess what? It's going out of print. It's going to be just digital. So that's sad in itself, but you understand the media, in this case, is changing. But the other day, I was watching the Today Show, and they were talking about this, that the latest home journal was going to go out of print, and it is sad, and how everything is going digital, and there was a lot of discussion about how nice it really is to touch something, maybe grab a glass of wine and read the magazine you like. I personally do like the physical magazines as well. But then a lady came, and she said that the reason the magazine was going out of print was because advertisers do not want to advertise to baby boomers. Urgh. Come on! Let's think about one thing. There are many reasons why the magazine could have been going out of business, right? Or out of advertisers. We can, I don't know the reasons. 3.4 million subscribers will tell you they have enough, right? To, to get advertisers. But maybe it's the media in itself that is dying. Maybe the, the magazine is too generous about a lot of things. And today people want more in-depth subjects. There are many reasons why we could guess. Uh, the reason why it's going out. But to say that advertisers don't want baby boomers, well, let me tell you one thing. I hope this lady is just wrong, and I can leave with that. But if what she said is true, then come on. We are either talking to very big, dumb advertisers or very big, dumb companies. Because what are they, out of their minds? I'm going to remind you once again, Boomers spend $3.1 trillion a year, and each boomer has an average of $25,000 to spend on extra things. They are decision makers, not only for themselves, but for their aging parents and for their grandchildren. They are buyers. They like to buy. They like to spend. So, come on. The magazine is going out because advertisers don't want to target boomers. They must be out of their minds or they all went to Denver and smoked some pot because something's wrong here. So one day, many, many, many years ago, I was with my family on a fair. Uh, it was kind of a trade show and I remember there were lots of animals. Maybe it was a pet expo. I really don't remember. But I was going through the boots and I remember I had my sister beside me at that moment and we saw these boxes that had something inside and we went to look at those and they were rocks and then the guy looked at me and said well that's a pet rock 
And then he went to talk to us, and maybe I was under 10, I really don't remember the exact time, but he went to talk like we could have a pet rock, because it was a lot better than any other kind of pet, right? Before she didn't bark, it wouldn't run away. If I was mad at somebody, I could just pick it up and throw it at them, and we could cater to that pet, and it would become our special friend. And I remember I got one, and my sister got one, and for quite a while, they, they, I really cared about that rock. You do remember the pet rock, and you, you, you do remember it was a marketing gimmick that, you know, made some people very, very rich. Uh, you might not agree with the concept, but the fact was that as a child, that pet rock had a special meaning to me, and it was very fun. So tell me, did you have your own pet rock? I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.